Today's lesson is called superfoods, not a magic bullet. Hello everyone, my name is Jeff. I'm Roger. Today we're going to continue to talk about superfoods. Hey, are they all that they're made up to be? Can they actually do what people claim they can do? And we talked about some examples of superfoods that we've all been told about. There are some commonplace ones like green tea, spinach, blueberries, etc. And there are some unusual ones like quinoa, chia seeds, and acai berries, which you may have heard about. Maybe people have tried to sell you these things. Claiming that they can cure all your ills, but we're finding out today that well, no, these might be good for you, but they're not a cure-all. You can't just take these things and not eat anything else. There you go. Let's be clear about this. We're not saying that these so-called superfoods are bad for you. We have not said that. Okay, all of these things are good for you: green tea, spinach, blueberries, so on, so forth. These foods are good for you, but none of these foods, none of the foods that we've mentioned, are magic bullets. None of them are cure alls. Okay, you can't just eat one food for the rest of your life and be super healthy. Okay. On day one, we learned that dietitians they don't like using the term superfood because that term gives people the impression that you can't eat some single food or some individual food for the rest of your life and still be healthy. Well, dietitians they don't want to use that term because that's just not true. Yes, these foods are not unhealthy foods, but you can't just eat a single individual food for the rest of your life and be healthy. A healthy diet requires a broad range of foods: fruits, vegetables, nuts, fish, so on and so forth. You can't eat just one individual food and guarantee yourself good health. That's not the way it works. All right, folks, we'll have more on superfoods, but for right now, it's time for us to take a short break. Advertisements for superfoods can be so misleading that the EU banned the use of the term unless claims can be backed up with scientific evidence. Certainly, there are plenty of examples of superfoods that don't quite live up to their reputation. Good. First part, we see the word "live up to" means to achieve or realize. Behind it, we often see the word "promise," "expectation." Standard 的名词来表示达到、符合点点点。举例来说 ，The resort did not live up to the travelers' expectations. 这个度假中心不符合游客的期待。另外，补充两个与 live 相关的片语。首先，可以用 live it up 来形容尽情享受生活。所以可以说 ，After retiring from his law practice, Garth lived it up in Jamaica for several years. Garth 从律师工作退休后。在牙买加享受了好几年。再来 ，live down 可以表示使人忘记自己的过失，像是 Donna never lived down her behavior at the company banquet. Donna 无法让人忘记她在公司宴会上的行径。Advertisements for superfoods can be so misleading that the EU banned the use of the term unless claims can be backed up with scientific evidence. We did mention this last time. Unfortunately, there hasn't been much research done. Into whether these superfoods are actually effective or not. So in the EU or the European Union, there, they're trying to protect the consumers there, and they've banned the use of this term superfood. So if you're trying to sell these things in Europe and you want to use the word superfood, well, you can, but you've got to have some scientific evidence. If you don't have that scientific evidence or some scientific research that proves that these superfoods Foods can help you, then you cannot call them superfoods. There you go. Evidence. This word "evidence" is a lot like the word "proof." Yes, evidence refers to information that can be used to prove whether or not a theory 
is true. That's what happens in terms of science, okay? You investigate something and you find pieces of proof or evidence to see whether or not what you think is true or not. If something tells you that your theory is true, yay, you're on to something, okay? But if you find a piece of proof or evidence that says that your idea is wrong, well, you have to go back to the drawing board. Anyways, this month, there's a story about Sherlock Holmes. Holmes is a fantastic detective and investigator, and very often, he uses evidence and proof to solve crimes. And yes, when you're talking about crime, you can say that examples of evidence as far as crime is concerned might include fingerprints or DNA or stuff like that. That being said, Sherlock Holmes, his stories took place a long time ago. Usually he has to use his noggin and find evidence that way because, yeah, you couldn't take fingerprints or find DNA in Sherlock Holmes's day. Indeed. So if you're investigating a crime, you need to have evidence. Now, here in the next sentence, it says, certainly there are plenty of examples of superfoods that don't quite live up to their reputation. Okay. So yes, indeed, you can look for evidence for some of these superfoods and you probably won't find it for a lot of those superfoods. And so that makes it certain here that there are lots of examples of those superfoods that just don't live up to that reputation. So here we've got a phrase, to live up to something, that means you basically do what you claim that you can do. And in this particular case, your reputation is how other people see you, how they view you, do they think you're great, etc. Of course, you might have a good reputation in society as a good politician, for example, so you always win elections because you have a good reputation and you might lose elections if you have a bad reputation, if you have had a history of doing bad things or something like that, cheating other people, then you probably have a bad reputation. So yes, there are lots of examples of those superfoods that just don't do what people claim they can do. There you go. They don't live up to their reputation. They don't quite live up to their reputation. So yes, you have this idea of what these superfoods are supposed to do, but do they really do it? Mm, not exactly, okay? Yes, if you live up to something, okay, that means you do as well as you're expected to do. You kind of do what you promise or you do as your claim. Now, do superfoods deliver on their claims? Oh, you'll live forever and never be sick again if you eat superfoods. Do they live up to that reputation? Do they live up to those claims? No, they don't, apparently. They don't quite live up to their reputation. By the way, we talked about this word reputation. You could say that the board of directors elected him CEO due to his sterling reputation. He's never made a mistake. Everybody likes this particular person. And yes, he delivers. He's going to make the company a ton of money. That's what everybody thinks about this guy. That's what the majority of people at the company think of this guy. This is the commonly held opinion or belief about that person. This is this person's reputation. But a guy, I want to buy him a drink and shake his hand. Okay, that brings us to the end of the first part of our lesson. Let's move on now to the next part. We'll listen first. Take watercress, for instance. This little leafy green is officially listed as a powerhouse vegetable by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention because it contains 10% or more of the daily requirement of 17 specific nutrients per 100 kilocalories. It sounds great until you realize you would have to eat 25 cups of it to get that much. Goji berries are another such superfood. They contain more iron than steak, but it turns out that the iron comes in a form that our bodies don't absorb very easily. Leafy. 这个字是形容词指绿叶的或多叶的。例如, Paula loved the tall leafy tree in the park by her house. Paula很喜欢住家旁边公园里的那棵树叶茂密的大树。另外补充与leafy相关的单字, green来指绿叶蔬菜。
So I can say, Sandy insists on preparing leafy greens for her family whenever she cooks at home. 只要在家煮饭 ，Sandy 都坚持要为家人准备绿叶蔬菜。再来看到的单词是名词 nutrient， 指营养成分、营养素或养分，像是。A mother's breast milk has all the important nutrients a baby needs. 妈妈的母乳有小婴儿需要的所有重要营养素。另外，补充与 nutrient 相关的单词 nutrition, n u t r i t i o n, nutrition 有从食物中取得的营养之意。我们可以说 proper nutrition is necessary if you don't want to get sick. 如果你不想生病的话，正确的营养是必要的。接着我们看到名词 kilocalorie 为热量单位，指千卡，缩写为 k c a l cal。像是 some potato chips are more than 500 kilocalories per bag。有些洋芋片一袋超过五百大卡。Okay, there are plenty of examples of superfoods that don't quite live up to the reputation. There are Many superfoods out there that say they can do something but can't really do that thing. Now, you want some examples of this? Well, let's do that right now. Let's give you some examples. Take watercress, for instance. This little leafy green is officially listed as a powerhouse vegetable by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Because it contains 10% or more of the daily requirement of 17 specific nutrients per 100 kilocalories, wow, that does sound good. There's a whole lot of information in that sentence, but does that mean that watercress is actually going to be a superfood?、Hmm, well, we'll have to wait and see on that particular claim. Before we move on, though, let's talk about the word prevention. Here, prevention refers to the act of stopping something or the act of keeping something from happening. So, let's say you're a part of an organization that seeks to prevent things. That means you're trying to keep those things from happening. Okay, and that's what prevention is all about. Okay, if you are engaged in acts of prevention, you want to stop things from happening. You want to keep these things from happening. And yes, the noun is prevention. The verb is. Prevent to prevent something is to keep something from occurring. Indeed, so of course this is a part of the United States government, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. They want to control disease and to stop them, to prevent them. And they're talking about watercress, si young sai, of course. And it's a leafy vegetable, which means you you know it's a vegetable that has leaves like、uh, spinach does. And of course, people are claiming it's a superfood, a powerhouse vegetable, and they're doing this because it contains a lot of nutrition here, 10% more of the daily requirement for 17 specific nutrients. Nutrients are things like vitamins and minerals, vitamin A, D, C, and iron and stuff like that. Those are nutrients. And of course, this is per 100 kilo calories. Kilo means a thousand, so I guess for every thousand calories, it has this amount of nutrition. Well, wow, that sounds like good news, doesn't it? It sounds great until you realize that you would have to eat 25 cups of watercress to get that much. That's a lot of watercress. I like my watercress. It's tasty. It's kind of crunchy. But my goodness, I don't want to eat that much. Twenty-five cups of watercress is just too much to get that kind of nutrition. Yeah, watercress is a leafy green. It's kind of like a cabbage. And yes. Very often, leafy greens are not high in calorie content. Okay, so here let's break down the math. Yes, you get tons of these specific nutrients per 100 kilocalories, but no one eats 100 kilocalories worth of watercress. You'd have to eat 25 cups of it to get all of those nutrients. So apparently, it is a powerhouse food. But if you really wanted to get everything you could out of watercress, you would have to eat more than you could possibly eat in one meal or in one serving. You'd have to eat. 
tons of it. So that's a little bit misleading, I would say. Even though it is high in these nutrients, can you really live on it? Can you really get all of those nutrients in a reasonable way from it? I don't think so. Anyways, that's enough for watercress. It's not bad for you, but you can't live on it. And if you wanted to, you'd have to eat tons of it. So watercress is out as a superfood. But there's more. Goji berries are another such superfood. They contain more iron than steak, but it turns out that the iron comes in a form that our bodies don't absorb very easily. So there you go. Yes, if you looked at the chemical profile of goji berries, you'd say, wow, that's a berry with tons of iron in it, more than steak even. But this is a form of iron that we can't absorb into our bodies or we can't take into our body. So what's the point of all that iron being in these berries if when we eat these berries, we can't take the iron into our bodies? Yeah, what's the point? We can't absorb the iron, so big deal, goji berries contain iron that we can't process. Now here we've got the verb absorb. Here the verb absorb means to take in. For example, sponges absorb water or take water in. Now as far as the iron and goji berries are concerned, we can't absorb that into our bodies and use it, so what's the point of it even being there? That's a good question. So indeed, it kind of makes it sound like goji berries are kind of useless, but who knows, they might have other nutrients that are good for our bodies in different ways. Okay, that brings us to the end of the second part of our explanation. Let's now move on to the third part. You can also have too much of a good thing. Seaweed is full of vitamins and minerals, but it also contains iodine, which is bad for your health in excess. This is not to say that superfoods should be avoided. They are good for you and great as part of a healthy diet. Just remember that it's the entire diet that needs to be healthy. 第三部分我们看到单字 iodine， 这个字为名词，指碘。例如。Michael's face was contorted in a grimace of pain when the nurse put iodine on the wound. 当护士把碘酒涂在 Michael 的伤口上时，他痛的脸都扭曲了。最后看到一个单词是 excess， 课文中当名词使用指过量或过度，像是 The star was paid in excess of ten million dollars for his role. 那位明星饰演该角色的酬劳超过一千万美元。而 excess 除了当名词使用外，还可以当形容词使用，有过多的或多余之意。所以可以说 ，Allison joined the exercise class to try to get rid of excess pounds. Allison 参加运动课程，试图减掉多余的体重。Next, let's go ahead and talk about seaweed. Okay, I see seaweed all over the place these days. Everybody is eating it. It must be good for you, right? Well, it is, but you can also have too much. Of a good thing, yes. Seaweed is good for you, but you can eat too much of it. Yes, if you have too much of a good thing, that means you have eaten that thing to excess. Even if this thing you're eating is good for you, you can eat it to the point where it comes or it becomes bad for you. Yes, too much of a good thing means too much of a beneficial or useful thing can actually hurt you. You can do it to the point where it becomes. Harmful, right? So it is possible for you to eat things that are good for you, but to eat too much of those things. So yes, you could have too much of a good thing, like water, for example. If you drink too much water, that could actually be bad for you. Of course, doctors and dietitians are telling us, "Hey, make sure you drink enough water every day." But it is possible to get too much of a good thing. Too much water is actually bad for us. But here we've Got seaweed. That's an example here. Seaweed is full of vitamins and minerals, but it also contains iodine, which is bad for your health in excess. 
Excess here is a noun that just means too much of something, and we do hear from dietitians or nutritionists that iodine is good for us, that we need it in our diet, but we can't have too much of it. Too much of it will be poisonous. It will be bad for us if we have too much of it. If we have it in excess, yes. If we have excessive amounts of it, it can be bad for us. And remember here, seaweed is a non-count noun. Please do not add an s to this. How much seaweed did you eat, for example? Okay, sounds good to me. Let's go ahead and wrap things up. The final paragraph of our article says, "This is not to say that superfoods should be avoided. They are good for you and great as part of a healthy diet. Just remember that it's the entire diet." That needs to be healthy. There's not one single cure-all. There's not one single magic bullet. Make sure you have a healthy diet featuring a wide range of healthy foods. All right, folks. With that, that's it for our article on superfoods, and it's time for you guys to hear from the Chinese teacher. Hello, 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。课文第二部分提到说，枸杞也是一种超级食物。那读到这个段落的最后一句 ，They contain more iron than steak, but it turns out that the iron comes in a form that our bodies don't absorb very easily. 它所含的铁质比牛排更多，结果这种铁质是我们人体不易吸收的类型。好，句子里面有一个单字叫 absorb， 我们来学习它的字首字根。a b 这个字首它有 from， 就表示从什么什么的意思。那么字根 s o r b 它有 suck in， 有吸入、吸进来的意思。这样应该很容易联想到说。Absorb 它有吸取、吸收的意思嘛？从什么什么吸进来？好，如果我们在后面加上字尾 a b l e， 可以表达可怎么样、能怎么样的。Absorbable 就表达可吸收的、能被吸收的。好，另外课文里面还用到一个片语叫 come in， 我们就顺便来学这个片语的常见用法。第一种呢是像课文里面它表达说以什么样的形式出现，或是表达说有什么样的种类样式可以选择。Come in 后面常常会接颜色啊、尺寸、款式、外形等等的名词来表达说某物品有哪些不同样式可以选择。例如 ，This laptop comes in multiple color choices。这款笔记型电脑有多种颜色可以供选择。好，第二种呢是用 come in 来表达上市，像是 The latest model will come in next month。最新的款式下个月就会上市喽。好，那第三个呢是用来表达得名。次像是比赛里面得名次，那后面通常就会接序数，像是 first, second, last 等等。例如 ，due to lack of practice, Jimmy came in last in the race. 因为缺乏练习 ，Jimmy 在比赛中名次垫底了。好，接着读到课文最后一句，他说 ，Just remember that it's the entire diet that needs to be healthy. 只要记得是要整份饮食都是健康的。这边要介绍的是分裂句的用法。当我们要强调某个句子的某个部分时，常常会用到分裂句。我们就是把要强调的部分摆在 it is 跟 that 之间，或者是 it was 跟 that 之间，然后把句子里面剩下的部分摆到 that 之后。所以它的句型是 it is 加上强调的部分，加上 that。再加其他的部分，或者是也可以把 it is 改成 it was。那像这样的句型呢，就是用来强调原本句子里面的主词啊、受词啊、地点或是时间等等。像课文句子本来可以写作 Just remember that the entire diet needs to be healthy。要记得整份饮食都必须是健康的。那它是为了强调 that 子句里面的主词 the entire diet， 所以它就把这个主词摆在 it is 跟 that 之间，所以才会变成 it's the entire diet that needs to be healthy。好，那我们来造一个例句。The smell of freshly baked cookies attracted us to the kitchen。刚烤好这个饼干香味把我们引到厨房了。如果要强调说就是那个香味把我们引到厨房的，那你就可以把。
the smell of freshly baked cookies 摆在 it was 跟 that 之间来形成分裂句，变成 it was the smell of freshly baked cookies that attracted us to the kitchen. 好，那么以上就是今天重点整理。我们回顾今天的单词吧。Evidence. CCTV cameras outside the store were broken, so there isn't any video evidence of the robbery. Reputation. Paul has a reputation for being the most friendly and helpful guy in the office. Prevention. Our city should put more time and effort into crime prevention. Nutrient. The label on this box of cereal says that there are 15 essential nutrients in every serving. Absorb. Please get me another towel. This one is too wet to absorb any more water. Excess. Dairy farms in the United States have been overproducing milk, and now they're struggling to find uses for the excess. Discussion starter starts now. And now it's time for our discussion starter, Roger. Should food companies be allowed to label products as superfoods? It should be illegal because there's no scientific evidence that says these foods are actually better for us than other kinds of food, and that's misleading. It can trick people into buying things they don't need, and I certainly think governments should forbid the use of that term. What do you think? Well, they should be able to, because this is a free country with free speech. Advertisers should be able to say whatever they want. I think that people should listen to scientists and to dietitians and people like that, because they won't lead you astray. Whereas advertisers, they're only there to sell you stuff, and well, consumers should know that. Okay, everyone. With that, today's article is now complete. But as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See, See you next, next time. time.